And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Never seen the righteous. No seed begging bread. If you see me crying, you don't have to worry about me. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, set me free. Don't have a lot of money. Doing the very best I can. I never seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seen begging bread. If you see me crying, don't have to worry because when I think of the goodness and everything that he's done for me seemed our hope was gone you know what the devil he thought he had but I began to call in the name of Jesus The one who died to set me free. PRC, take it up. Doing the very best I can. Never 
Noah seen the righteous forsaken. Noah seen making bread. If you see me crying, you don't have to worry. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and everything that he's done for me, seemed our hope was gone. The devil thought he had me. But I call the name of Jesus. The one who died to set me free. If you see me crying, you don't have to worry. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and everything that he's done for me, I hope was gone. Was gone. The, devil. the devil thought he me. But I began to call the name of Jesus. You watching my television. Listening by radio. If you're going through a storm. You ought to take the time to call on Jesus. He'll be a shelter in the storm. He'll mend your heart if it's torn. You ought to call him. You ought to call him. You ought to call the name of Jesus. The one who died to set me free. He's a shelter in a storm now. Miss my heart when I am torn. Lifts me up when I am down. He's a friend when there's no one around. I love, I love the Lord. That's what he is, that's what he is. He'll be the same for you. Cast your cares upon him. For he cares for you. He'll save you from your sins. Deliver you from hell. given us another blessed week. He has kept us in our right mind. And we are grateful unto him. You know, many times when people receive material goods or wealth, they show emotion. Give somebody a new car. Let them get a, a new house. And they show some emotion. Many times they want to go and tell somebody. Just can't keep it to yourself. They don't run into some money. They want to tell somebody uh, how they have been what they call blessed. But just being saved from our sins, delivered out of the hand of the enemy, if the Lord doesn't do anything else, that's priceless. The blood of Jesus is priceless. And God making it available for us to be delivered, not having to spend eternity in hell, he is worthy of a praise. You may get a brand new car. 
But over time, it's going to get old. You can get a brand new house. Over time, it's going to get old. But the blood of Jesus will sustain you forever. It will never lose its value. And so again, we just thank God. And that's the reason why we run Jumping Shop. It's not about material goods or wealth, but it's all about being saved from our sin, being delivered out of a situation that we could not get ourselves out of. The Lord reaching way down into the hole, the pit of sin that we were in and delivering us and putting us in a position to where we can be a witness unto everyone else of the saving, healing, and delivering power of Jesus Christ. To those of you who are new, we welcome you to the Pentecostal Revival Hour. And we encourage you to call up your family members, call up your friends, fellow church members, call even if, if fellow friends, even today sinners, call them up and tell them to turn to the channel that you are viewing and may each and every one of you be blessed by this telecast. Again, we're not here to raise money. We're not here to increase our popularity. But we are here to promote Jesus. He has made the difference in our life. And he will do the same for you. And we do encourage you, if you ever are in this area, to come and visit any of our church locations. We are in Forsyth, Georgia, Fort Valley, Georgia, and here in Lazella, Georgia. And we begin our services with Sunday school every Sunday morning at all three locations at 9 a.m. And we invite you to come be a part of Sunday school. You have, we have open discussion. Everyone is free to bring forth their ideas and their viewpoints. And we help one another in learning the word of God. Sunday school is very important, especially to a new believer. You need to be in a place where you can ask your questions or you can voice and, and, and we can see how you're thinking. And we can help you and help others. And you can help us also. So we encourage everyone to come to Sunday school. Immediately following our Sunday school, we go into our morning worship. And it begins at 11 a.m. This is in our three church locations. And in our morning service, it gives an opportunity, us an opportunity to get to know one another better. We have testimony service. Everyone can share their experiences, whether good or what we call bad. And we help one another in our morning worship service. And then we all convene here at the Lazella location every Sunday evening for our evening service. And it begins at 7 p.m. So we invite you to come. If you're in the Central Georgia area, come on over to the Lazella Pentecostal Church. And the uh, address here is 7545 Knoxville Road, Lazella, Georgia, zip code 31052. If you happen to have GPS, you can put that address into your GPS and it will get you here. Our church is relatively easy to find with just one turn off of the main highway in this area. So we encourage you to come on and be a part of these services. And our mailing address is 7697 Knoxville Road, Lazola, Georgia, zip code 31052. And if you desire any media from us, CDs or DVDs, all you have to do is contact us and let us know, and we will send it to you. And upon receiving your CD or DVD, the only thing we ask is that you send a donation of any amount to help to cover the cost of producing, shipping, and handling your media. Uh, we don't put a charge on there because that may leave someone, someone off. But we want to try to offer this ministry to everyone who desires to have it. And if you desire more, after we receive your donation, we'll send you other 
CDs or DVDs, and we go back and forth in that manner. And that's the way that the founder of this ministry set it up, and that's how we are continuing to do. And God has sustained in the media ministry. So again, we just thank God for having that. We encourage you to visit our church website. The web address is www.lizellachurch.com. Again, it's www.lizellachurch.com. Once there, visit the tracks page. That's the most important page on the website. There we have several tracks written by the founder of this ministry, Apostle Albert Phelps. You can go there and read those tracks. And you have a good idea of what we teach in this ministry. If you need detailed directions to any of our locations, if you go to the website, click on the maps and addresses button, once there, you will see all three locations. All you have to do is click on the location that you desire to attend, enter in a beginning address, and your computer, laptop, phone, whatever, will generate a map that will lead you from wherever you are to here. And so again, we just thank God for allowing us, a little small ministry, to be like a stick of dynamite in these last days and times. And if you want to be saved or if you need prayer, you ought to call us. The telephone number is area code 478-935-8589. And uh, again, we just thank God for having this opportunity. If you want to give us a thumbs up, feel free to do that. Uh, sometimes we get some negative calls, but that's good too. All of it to the glory of God. And so, again, we just thank God for what he's doing in this ministry. And we ask that you pray for us, and we will continue to pray for you. Now, are you ready to go forth with your praise and worship? The devotional leaders coming at this time. Give the Lord praise as they come. Sister Pastor Walter is coming at this time.
give it what the Lord has done. Oh, yeah. Amen. If you have your Bible, go ahead and give them. Hold them up and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I believe what it says to believe. I come to the Lord Zella Pentecostal Church to be taught the word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sins. And the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. I am Christ-like. I am born again. I have power over the devil. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen once again. And if you will, just go ahead and bow your heads. Close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, praise, worship. We want to say thank you for another chance to come into your house, to come before you, and also to come before your people. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you have given all mankind through your son, Jesus. Lord, we accept the gift that you have given. We, are, we are, have applied him into our lives. And Lord, we're praying tonight as we go forth in your word for others who may be unsaved. For them to see the need of them having Jesus in their lives. We pray for salvation. Pray for healing. We pray for yokes to be destroyed. According to your word and by your word. In Jesus name. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Again we thank God for being able to come together in his house one more time. Again, the Lord has been good to us in giving us this opportunity. Uh, Many people wish they could come, get out of their house, or maybe even out of their prison, whether physical or natural or spiritual, and come and be a part of a church service. But the Lord been good to us. And we thank him for doing and opening doors for us and enabling us to be able to come together one more time in his name. Again, we thank God for the spiritual founder of this ministry, Apostle Alpha Phelps. We're just continuing in his vision. We're fulfilling the mission that he started. Uh, We're just watering the grass that he planted. And God is giving the increase. And so again, we just thank God for Apostle Phelps. Thank him for allowing himself to be used by the Lord. Many people were saved through him. In fact, most of us, uh, where would we be if we had never come in contact with Apostle Phelps? So again, we thank God for him. We also thank God for the current senior pastor of this ministry, senior pastor Ethel Phelps. She was right there with Apostle Phelps from the beginning. When this ministry started out as a house ministry. And look what the Lord has done. There were many ups and downs, obstacles. But she was there in support of Apostle Phelps. And she is continuing on. Now with the banner or the baton in her hand. And again, we just thank God for her. And we are praying that God continues 
to use her. We also thank God for our other pastors who are here tonight. Thank God for the pastor of the Forsyth Pentecostal Church, Pastor Willie Wooten, along with his lovely wife, working in the Forsyth area. And if you ever are in the Forsyth area, go on, go on over to the Forsyth Pentecostal Church and be there with, uh, with Pastor Wooten. And he'll get you straightened out. If you ain't your sin, he'll lead you to Jesus. And so again, we just thank God for him and the work that he's doing in the Forsyth area. We also thank God for Pastor Lizzie Dennert, along with Assistant Pastor Melvin Dennert. And they are in the Fort Valley area, at the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church. And if you're in that area, visiting or live there, go over and check Pastor Dennert out. And the rest of the congregation over at the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church. Again, if you don't worry about your sin, bring your sin on to the to Jesus. The church is the hospital for sin. Just like we have a, a, a natural hospital, when we have a, a natural ailment, and we don't think we can handle it ourselves, what do we do? We go to go to, to the professional. And sin is something you can't handle by yourself. You got to go to the professional. You got to go to Jesus. And he'll clean up your sin. So again, if you're in the Fort Valley, Valley area, go over to the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church. If you're in the Macon, Lazilla area, come on out here. Be a part of these services. And again, our mission and goal is to lead people to Jesus. It's not about us becoming a big notarized ministry by the public. But it's all about Jesus. If a person gets saved from their sins and we hear about it, we shout about it. Sometimes our phone operators come in and make a report. Hey, we got one today. And we give God thanksgiving. We give God glory. We give God praise. Because that was one that the devil thought he had. And so, again, we, we like to make the devil out of a liar. Again, we just thank God for it. And now this time we're going to get ready to go into our message for this evening. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to the first epistle of Peter. First Peter. And we're going to look at chapter 2. Chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, we know that Peter was a disciple of Jesus. He was a Jew. He followed Jesus. And when we get to this epistle, this is a letter that he is writing. Now we know that also Peter, contemporary with Apostle Paul, now, Paul is known as the apostle to the Gentiles because that's basically who he ministered to. If you notice, all the books that he wrote were to churches that were in foreign countries from Israel. But we have Apostle Peter here writing this and if we look at chapter 2, and I'm going to begin reading with verse 9. It reads, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now we're going to pause right there for a minute. Again, Apostle Peter, he is a Jew. In his ministry, even after he was saved, Apostle Peter 
still had a few issues. I'm talking about with people of other nationalities. You remember he had to have that situation with Cornelius to help him to get kind of straightened out. Now you can be saved and have some issues that the Lord going to have to work with you on. No matter what no one else tells you. No matter what no one else tries to tell you. It's something the Lord got to deal with you on. So the Lord had to deal with Peter. This Jesus right hand man. Because Peter was prejudiced. But notice here in this writing, and I believe he wrote this after he got straightened out. Now, if you would just look at, at verse 9, just read it by itself, you would think that his audience were Jews. Let's go back and read this again. Because they were the people of God. They were the chosen people of God. It said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Sound like children of Israel to me. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now let's go on into verse 10. It says, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. See, there, there was a time where we were not a people. See, in God's eye, he only had Jews and Gentiles. You either was in the camp with the Jews or you outside with everybody else. All of us in here, if we came along in Old Testament times, we would have been outside the camp. But look at what Jesus did. Look at what God did. When we were not a people, the words say we, we, we wasn't even a people. Now, you want to argue? Don't argue with me. Argue with this word here. Which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God. Those of us who are saved, we are now the people of God. We have been brought in by adoption. But we were on the outside. Now, if you're still in your sin, you're still on the outside. No matter how high you are in status, no matter how much power you have, if you are in your sin, you are not a people of God. So you don't, you, according to the word, you don't even become a person till you get saved. You just an animal, a beast. But whenever you allow the Lord to come in, allow him to change the old you, he'll turn you from a creature into a person. So again, this is what he's writing. And the title of the message tonight is The People of God. 
That's what we are. We have obtained mercy at a time where there was a time we, we didn't have any mercy from God. But since Jesus has come, we now have obtained mercy. So I want to go back now. Since we know who we are, we know we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. That ought to make you feel good. When you know who you are in Jesus, it ought to give you joy. Unspeakable joy. It doesn't matter what the devil throws up at you because situations going to happen. The enemy going to try to get you to feel that you are lower than or less than. But when you know who you are, you know, I think about it in the natural sense. Over in England, they have princes and prince who are who in charge. And he carry himself. Those prince brothers, whenever they go out in the public, they carry themselves because they know who they are. No one has to tell them that, hey, you a prince. Hold your head up. Some people that are in royalty, they have an air about them. Because they know who they are. See, so many of us who are saved, we don't know who we are yet. Because when you learn who you are, through Christ, you can go through anything and still stick your chest out. You can, you can truly say this now. You must don't know who my daddy is. See, I'm a child of the living God. But this is you it's all it's all in, in, in what you know. You may be seated. Jesus knew who he was. He was proud of his father. Even in knowing what he was gonna have to go through, he was still able to take it. Because he knew and understood the final outcome at the end. After he was betrayed and he began to be questioned. And the king began to ask him, are you a king? Jesus said, thou sayest. In other words, you said it. He didn't put him, he didn't, he didn't come with a bigger knife. Yeah, I'm the king. I'm the king of kings. It wasn't about what or who they thought he was. It was all about who he knew he was. See, so many times we so concerned about with other folk. I'm talking about people of God. What they think. What they say. But when you know who you are in Christ, it doesn't matter what other folks say.
Jesus was crucified over a lie. They had got two men to falsely accuse Jesus. Jesus knew they were lying. He knew about the whole setup. Now, if that would have been some of us, say what? What you say now? And what he lied, lied on about was it brought life or death. It was serious. Well, we don't see nowhere in the word where he railed against his accusers because he knew who he was. See, whenever you know who you are, you don't have to say anything. He wasn't bothered by the lie. He knew it was part of the process. If you get, if you are a child of God, you you gonna be lied on now. Folk gonna talk about you. But you ought to know who you are, so you don't let that get you all upset. You ever say, "Well, I'm no better than Jesus." If Jesus can take that, who am I? I ought to be able to take what people say and not let it worry me. Some of us still holding on to anger and hatred over stuff happened 20 years ago. I preached about it. Let it go. Let that stuff go. I'm still holding on. If you come in contact with the person that did it to you, can't even speak to them. Water on the bridge is gone. Let it go. Let, let it go. Forgive the person. Shock him with a hook. Oh, I'm going to all. I'm tearing that flesh up tonight. That, that flesh is going to say, oh, hook. Uh, 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 uh. Ain't nothing you can do about it, no way. Ain't nothing they can do about it neither, but ask you to forgive them. <laughs> forgive them and keep on going. We must forgive. Every time we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, We either pronouncing a blessing upon our life or we pronouncing a cursing upon our life. I'm talking about when to get down to that part where we're talking about forgive us our debts even as we forgive us. Jesus said, love your enemies. Ooh, that, that flesh, ooh, ooh. The enemy is somebody who you know is out to do you wrong. But I didn't say you got to like them, but it said you got to love them. 
say, Pastor Fair, what's the difference? It's a difference. Whenever you love, you'll do whatever you can do to help the individual that you love. You ain't got to like what they do. You don't have to love what they do. But I'm talking about the individual. Did that individual call you? You know they're enemy. And they ask you to do something. And if you are able to do it, you go and aid that enemy, and you do it with a smile. See, I want to show my enemy the God that's in me. See, I'm not the same as I was in the past. I have God in me now. So I can't conduct myself the way I used to. Because the Lord has changed me. I'm now a royal priesthood. See, going back to, the, to, to 1 Peter 2 and 9. I'm not, you see, we're not the same as we were in the past. There's a reason why God, I'm giving you another example of change. We know that Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. We know that Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Now Jacob named had a negative connotation to it. His name meant deceiver. His name meant supplanter. So on down the line, God, when he wrestled with Jacob, He told Jacob that you're no longer going to be known as Jacob, but your name from now on is going to be Israel. See, God did not want him to be identified with his past. See, your name, the, the way you were in the past, that's part of your identity. That's what people identify you by. All the things you did when you were in sin. See, when you get saved, God changes you. He no longer wants you to be identified by your past. In the past, you may have been a deceiver. In the past, you may have been a supplanter, a trickster. But now you are a child of God. That's why God changed his name. Because many times our name identifies us. So now, when we get saved, we're no longer a sinner. God has changed us to be a saint. He has changed our identity. We're no longer identified with the devil. But now we have become a son of the true and living God. Chosen generation. 
royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. So since the Lord has made this change in our life, we ought to not have an exuberant praise. Lord, I thank you. I don't no longer have to be identified with the drunkard I used to be. I no longer have to be identified with the drug addict I used to be. I no longer have to be identified with the fornicator and the liar I used to be. Now I can be identified as a child of the living God. I'm now a person. You may be asleep. Just think, we could have been born in the time when the Gentiles were locked out. Even though God did something for them too. Jesus did something for them too. Gave them a chance. But for us, we see we can have it on this side. We can have it in our lifetime. And I encourage everyone. If you're not saved, you know you're not really a person yet. You're not, you're not a people. But you can become. You can have a transformation. You can have a change of identity. Now, it ain't, it ain't about what people say and what they, who they are, who you are to them. But it's all about what God says. People going to tell you, you can't be perfect. You can't live free from sin. It ain't about what people say. People going to find fault. They going to look so hard. And if you look hard enough, you, gonna, you can find anything, a mistake on anybody. It's how far you want to go with it. But in God's eyes, see, God, he don't look at folk like that. Whenever you come to the Lord and, and you ask him to forgive you of your sins, He take the slate and wipe it clean. See, man, he log it on the hard drive. So when you do something he don't like, he can go back and pull it back up. But Jesus Christ, he erased the slate. He make you a new creature in Christ. So again, I hope. We praise God for you watching the Pentecostal Bow Hour telecast. We invite you to watch all of our telecasts. We invite you to be with us in our services. We're in three locations, Forsyth, La Della, and Fort Valley, Georgia. We begin every Sunday morning with Sunday school at 9 a.m., Morning worship begins at 11 a.m. and our evening services are here at the Las Vegas Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're in Bible study every Monday night here at the Las Vegas Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're also in Bible study in Fort Valley at the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church beginning at 7:30 p.m. So tune in to the Pentecostal Bible Hour Telecast. I say that you're worthy.